Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Tech Team Tronics channel. Today, we're presenting a special called 1972 in Aviation. And what you see before you is kind of what was going on at the time, like all kinds of crazy stuff. And I want to lead in with this. First at five, we're following breaking news in the Lehigh Valley. A man is in FBI custody right now, accused of trying to bring an explosive device onto a plane. The So, I mean, do you really think you could get away with that today? It, the technology has changed so much over the years. I mean, we're looking at almost 51 years of advances in technology and people were trying to pull the same stunts back in the day. So a good place to kind of, you know, begin is to look at Wikipedia. Because it's kind of a good bearing, a good place for a timeline. So that's what we'll be looking at today. And we're going to look at some list of aviation related incidents and accidents and different things. We're do. We'll start with January and um, I'll read off some of the, uh, the events. The last elements of the U.S. Army's 101, the 101st Air Force. The last elements of the U.S. Army's 101st Airborne Division, Airmobile, are withdrawn from Vietnam. Then we have the Air Italia Company, formed in 1969, becomes fully operational. January 4th, Beeman Bangladesh Airlines is founded. And having lost its aircraft in a crash 11 days earlier, the Peruvian airline lanza runs out of operating funds and goes out of business and it has been founded since 1963. so lanza it's lineas areas nationales south america is a peruvian commercial airline headquartered in lima peru which was established in 1963 after it last lockheed electra crashed on christmas eve 1971. The airline ceased operation and lost its operating authority on January 4th, 1972. Well, let's take a look at some, another great source of information too, is the Aviation Safety Network. Because it kind of backs up, like, like, there's more, like, there's a lot of good information here, but if you want to get into the crash aspect of it, like if we're going to look at some detailed information on some accidents, a couple of noteworthy accidents then we're going to look at the accident report in the aviation safety network shout out to wikipedia shout out to aviation safety network and we shall proceed so let's look at the first few days of january in aviation and you will see that the on the 6th of january a Hawker Sidley HS748 was lost near Chetamal. So I'll go here and we'll take a look at it. And uh, we'll see that it was a it was a bad deal. It was Thursday, the 6th of January, 1972. We have a Hawker Sidley HS748. Stasa, Servicio. Aerios Especial, South America. I know I, I, I know I'm not pronouncing that right, but I don't really I'm not from there, so I wouldn't know. Um but you can feel free to correct me in the comment section of the video below. The aircraft crashed on a flight from Chetamai, Mexico City, via Merida and Villamosa. It departed from Chetamai at fifteen twenty one with the estimated time of arrival at Merida at six fifteen. So on January 7th, a Pacific Southwest Airlines PSA Flight 902, a Boeing 727-200 with 151 passengers on board, prepares to land at Los Angeles, California after a flight from San Francisco. Let's see here. If I could zoom this in a little bit so we all could see it. 
Two individuals and their infant son hijacked the airliner. They demand to be flown to Africa, but to agree to be flown to Cuba instead when they are informed the plane lacks the range to cross the Atlantic Ocean. The captain negotiates the release of the passengers in Los Angeles, after which the plane carries its crew, the hijackers, and three off-duty flight attendants to Cuba via a refueling stop in Tampa, Florida, and Cuba. The hijackers return control to the aircraft to the captain. Interesting. So they just gave the plane back. They couldn't win, and they gave the plane back. Let's see, as we see here, we don't have a full article on it. So moving on, Billy Jean Hurst hijacks a brain of Flight 38 at 727 with 102 passengers on board during a flight from Houston to Dallas. After arrival at Love Field, Dallas, he releases the other 94 passengers, but holds all seven crew members hostage, demanding to be flown to South America during a standoff with police. Eventually, the crew escapes. And police storm the airliner and arrest him. All right, it's January 19th. Flying a United States Navy F-4J Phantom II fighter of Fighter Squadron 96, VF-96, off the attack carrier USS Constellation, Lieutenant Randy Duke Cunningham and Lieutenant William Irish Driscoll our uh, Rio officer, radar intercept officer, shot down a North Vietnamese MiG-21 fighter. It is the first air-to-air -air victory by an American aircraft over Vietnam since March 1970. So, there was a lot of war going on, a lot of air-to-air -air combat. I mean, and more or less you have, it's not happening like that today, but it could very well happen, as we all know. With, with what's going on in the world. All right, moving on to January 20th, two months after the celebrated hijacking of Northwest Orient Flight 305 by an unidentified man who becomes popularly known as D.B. Cooper, Hughes Air West Flight 800 becomes the target of a copycat hijacker. After boarding at McCarran International Airport in Las Vegas, Nevada, 23-year-old Richard Charles LaPont Claims he has a bomb while he while the plane is on the taxiway and demands fifty thousand dollars in cash, two parachutes, and a helmet. When his demands are met, Lapont releases five point fifty one Reno Nevada bound passengers and two flight attendants. After which the DC nine takes off and flies towards Denver, Colorado, followed by two United States Air Force F one eleven fighters without a coat and cowboy boots. LaPont bails out of the plane's lower F door over the eastern plains in northeast Colorado in mid-afternoon. The parachutes he had been given were high-visibility ones secretly equipped with emergency locator devices, and he sprains his ankle on landing, making it impossible for him to move. He is apprehended a few hours later with minor injuries and very cold. The plane with the two pilots and the flight attendant aboard lands safely at Denver Stapleton's International Airport at 2.55 p.m. MST. And that would be Mountain, mountain Standard Time, Mountain Time Zone. Facing potential death penalty charges for air piracy, a point will be sentenced to 40 years in prison but will serve less than eight and released from the halfway house in 1979. On January 23rd, the United States suspects the SA Goal surface air missiles have become operational in North Vietnam. On January 26th, a couple of notable things happen here. Jat Yugoslav Airlines Flight 367 McDonald DC-9 32 explodes in flight at 33,330 feet, breaks into two pieces, and crashes near Serbaska, Kaminsky, second Slovakia, killing 27 of the 28 people on board. Flight attendant Vanessa Vlok survives the crash, setting a record that still stands as for the surviving the longest fall without a parachute. A hijacker. Let's, before we go there, let's see if we can find some more details about Flight 367 on January 26th. All right, so I'll screw it down. 
and then we'll take a look at this. So, the accident investigation report completed and information captured Wednesday, January 6, 26, of January 1972. All right. So, we have a DC 932. Manufacturer serial number 474825925. First flight, 1971. Total airframe hours, 2091. Two Pratt & Whitney J. T8D-9As kill almost everybody on the board except one. Aircraft damage destroyed. Location Czech Republic. Sesti Command C. En route to International Tsukoba Haven Kastrup Airport in Denmark. All right, so. It was headed to Croatia. So what caused this in-flight explosion to happen? A DC-932 operating during the air transport flight JU-367 crashed following an in-flight explosion and break up all 23 passengers. And four or five crew members were killed. One air hostess survived at 15,000 feet fall in the tail section. The airplane departed Stockholm, Sweden on a flight to Belgrade, Yugoslavia, and route stops to Copenhagen, Denmark. Zebrak was Yugoslavia, now Croatia. After uneventful first leg, the flight took off from Copenhagen at 1515 UTC with a planned arrival at Zagreb at 1700 UTC and route altitude was 10 point. Zero five zero meters, flight level thirty three hundred. Shortly after entering check airspace, an in flight explosion in the forward cargo hold of a homemade bomb caused the DC 9 to break up and crash. The bomb likely had been paced on the aircraft by Croatian extremist organization Yusasashi. Interesting. So, wow, that's fascinating. And there's more, you know, stuff that you could, if you want to research this further, you can go to the places that I went to, then you could look into this a lot further. All right, so hijacker commandeers Mohawk Airlines 452, a Fairchild Healer, FH-227B. For those, it's one of those. With 47 people on board flying from Albany, New York to New York City and demands ransom. He forces the airliner to land at Dutchess County Airport outside of Poughkeepsie, New York, where he is shot and killed while trying to escape in the getaway car. Uh, January 27, 1972. Civil aviation in Canada is halted by a strike by air traffic controllers. I would like to get more information about that, but I don't have that available at this time. So we'll like check that out. Man. All right. And then we'll go to January 29. Gary P. Trapnell hijacks a Transworld airline airliner during a flight from Los Angeles to New York and demands $306,000. The release from prison of militant Angela Davis. And a conversation with President Richard Nixon. A FBI agent shoots and disarms him, and he is in prison. In a separate incident in 1978, his wife Barbara Ann Oswald will die in an attempt to free him using a hijacked helicopter. And his daughter, Robin Oswald, will hijack another airliner in a failed attempt to get him released. Wow. So in that month, I mean, can you imagine, like, it, it's it's so different it's such different times it's wow it just boggles my mind that some of the stuff that they pulled off it just was crazy but they didn't they didn't succeed but it was like in the airlines it was kind of a built-in uh process or it was part of their 
a disruption of process that they had to deal with in the day. So moving on, in February, Air Nas New Mexico changes the names to Air Mexico. Air Mexico, for those that don't know, is a flag carrier of Mexico, based out of Mexico City, operates scheduled services to more than 90 destinations in Mexico, North, South, and Central America, and Central uh, the Caribbean, Europe, and Asia. In February, off the coast of Maine, a U.S. Navy Air Marine Counter Measures Unit participates in amphibious warfare exercises for the first time. February 4th. Beamman Bangladesh Airlines begins flight operations using a single Douglas DC-3 to provide domestic services. February 5th, Airflot and Lufthansa jointly opened services between Moscow and the Soviet Union at the time and, Mo and Frankfurt and Rhein, West Germany. Continuing on, the U.S. National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, and de Havilland, Canada, extensively modify a C-8, one of those, for a stall experiments, short takeoff and landing experiments. In February 10th, Bayman Bangladesh airplane, the only plane, a Douglas DC-3, caches, and during a test flight, less than a week after it began flight operations. Let's take it back. Let's take a look at February 10th and get more details on this. So it was 10th of February, Fe it was 10th of February, Thursday in 1972. Bim and Bim Dutch Airlines, registration unknown, training. So it was a training flights. Also in these days, there wasn't, the, the 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 jet simulator technology wasn't all there so they had to actually take the planes out and fly them for real and do the the patterns and work the flights and everything like that to get their hours up and and in some cases some mishaps happened and they lost the plane in training flights so that you know was that I, I remember that happened a couple of times from what I've read. All right. So on February 19th, a male passenger armed with a hand grenade attempts to hijack uh, an Elias Sud Aviation SE 210 Caravelle. It's a French jet airliner produced by Sud Aviation, developed by SNCASE in the early 1950s. Made its first flight May 27th, 1955. Okay, with 37 people on board flying from Cairo, Egypt to Amman, Jordan, and demands to be flown to Libya. Two security guards on board the airline are overpowering him, and the plane lands safely in Amman. So, hmm. Interesting. On February 22, Lufthansa Slight 649, a Boeing 747 200 flying from Tokyo, Japan to Frankfurt, Maine, West Germany, is hijacked during the New Delhi, India, Athens, Greece leg of the flight and forced to divert to Aden, the People's Democratic Republic of Yemen, where all 182 passengers and crew are released the next day in exchange for $5 million in ransom. Wow. The February was a short month. Always is a short month, except for the once we get a leap year. A bit. All right, moving on to March. All right, we have March 3rd, 1972, Mohawk Airlines Flight 405, a Fairchild Hiller FH-227 crashes into a house while on final approach in Albany County Airport, Albert, later Albany International Airport in Albany, New York, killing 16 of the 48 people on the plane, injuring all but one of the 32 survivors. The crash also kills one person and injures three others on the ground. Let's see if we could get more information on that. March 3rd. Let's see here. All right, so it was Mohawk Airlines registration November 7818 Mike. Serial number 541, first flight 1967, total airframe hours 10,068, cycles 15,714. 
two Rolls Royce Dart 532-7s. And, yeah. Quite a few casualties of crew, passengers, total. Aircraft was damaged beyond repair. Location, six kilometers, 3.8 miles south of Albany Airport, New York. United States of America, phase of a flight, approach, domestic, scheduled passenger. New York LaGuardia Airport, KLGA, United States of America, destination airport, Albany, New York, KLB. All right, so the aircraft, here's the narrative. The aircraft was 8.5 miles south of the airport on an ILS back course approach to runway 01 when the crew reported problems with the propeller cruise lock. The prop could not be feathered, and the aircraft struck a house at 3.5 miles short of the runway. The probable cause was the inability of the crew to feather the left propeller in combination with the descent of the aircraft below prescribed many of the altitudes for approach. The board is unable to determine why the left propeller could not be feathered. Contributing casual factors for the non-standard approach were the captain's preoccupation with Cruise pitch lock malfunction. The first officer's failure to adhere to company altitude awareness procedures and the captain's failure to delegate any meaningful responsibilities to the co pilot, which resulted in a lack of crew, a lack of effective task sharing during emergency. Also, the board was unable to determine why the propeller pitch lock malfunctioned during the descent. So we had the accident and vacation and the reports themselves are really interesting to read. If you ever have time, go in and read it. Um, this video is going to be long enough, so I think that we're going to just keep it going. But let's look at some of these photos. Wow. Wow. So that is something else. So let's go back to 1972. And on March 4th, BMAN Bangladesh Airlines inaugurates its first international route using a single Boeing 707 to provide service between Bangladesh and London. On March 7th at Tampa International Airport in Florida, come in. Edmund McKee pulls a revolver on National Airlines ticket agent. National Airlines was a U.S. major operator that operated from 1934 to 1980. It was headquartered in Miami. Um, so that's National Airlines. It was a, a ticket agent helping passengers board. National Airlines Flight 67 and Boeing 727 with 24 people aboard and takes the agent hostage saying he wants to hijack a jetliner. He's escorted aboard and demands to fly to Sweden. The captain informs McGee that the airliner lacks the range to cross the Atlantic Ocean and convinces him to release all the passengers and steps outside to continue negotiations. Once McGee exits the aircraft, security personnel overpower and arrest him. Then, moving on, as Shalk's International Airlines Grumman G73 Mallard refuels at Watson Island, Florida, during a flight from Miami to Bimini with five passengers and crew of two, Joseph Teron Bennett and James William Bruton of the Black Liberation Army hijack it and demand it be flown to Cuba. A chalk mechanic gets a pistol out of his car, intending to shoot out the plane's tires, but the hijackers shoot and wound him. After the pilot refuses to start the engines, the hijackers shoot him. Also, he jumps from the aircraft, followed by one passenger, with four passengers still aboard. Bennett and Bruton force the co-pilot to fly them to Havana, which, after bumping into a Grumman Goose parked beside it at Watson Island, the Mallard barely reaches with its fuel tank almost empty. Cuban authorities arrest the two hijackers and allow Mallard and his passengers and co-pilot to fly back to the United States the next day. Bruton will be killed in an armed robbery in Jamaica in 1975, while Bennett will return to the United States secretly in 1982 and will not be arrested until 1983, I guess, in the United States. 
Wow. And then on March 9th, American aircraft record their 100th protective reaction strike of the North Viet, I mean, excuse me, strike of the Vietnam War against enemy surface to air missiles and anti aircraft artillery sites. On March 11th, a hijacker commandeers Alitalia said aviation SE 2 tank Caraval flying from Rome to Milan with 36 people on board and forces it to fly to Munich, West Germany. March 12, Tunis Air and Society de Tunis in the Air. Tunis Air is a national airline in Tunisia formed in 1948. It operates scheduled international services to four continents based in Tunis Gatledge International Airport. All right, it takes first delivery of Boeing aircraft, the Boeing 727-200. March 14th, Sterling Airlines Flight 296, a caravel crashes into a mountain ridge near Calba and the United Arab Emirates, killing all 112 people on board. It remains the deadliest aviation accident in history of the nation. So it was March 14th, so we'll take a look at that. Get some more details about this. All right, we have the Sud Aviation SC-210 Caravel, 10B3, Sterling Airways, registration OYSTL, serial number 267, first flight 1970, total airframe hour 6,674. Sterling flight 296 was a charter service from Colombo, CMB, Sri Lanka to Copenhagen, Denmark. Refueling stops were planned at Bombay, India, Dubai, and Ankara. And after a one hour stopover at Bombay, the flight took off from Dubai at 1520 UTC. An IFR flight plan was submitted for Airway R19 containing five reporting points. The en route altitude was flight level 310. All reporting points were passed ahead of schedule. At 1725, the crew received current Dubai weather information, which showed a wind from 40 degrees, 8 knots, 10 kilometers visibility, and 5 out of 8 clouds at 2,000 feet. At 1742, the flight contacted Dubai approach and reported on the 084 radio of Dubai VOR. The approach controller told the crew to expect descent clearance at 1755. However, at 1749, the crew radioed approach control requesting an immediate descent as they were 95 nautical miles out unknown to the crew and the actual predicts the actual position was 162 nautical miles from dubai now you could you got to imagine the technology at the time it wasn't digital it was analog so you could kind of see how this mistake could be made the controller cleared the flight down to 4,000 feet and reported the runway 30 and 12 were both available the flight replied, we will see if we can make it straight in on 30. At 1756 hours, the flight reported descending through flight level 135. The controller replied, we cleared DO, and that's the uh, Dubai VOR, at 2,000 feet at Dubai at, at, at 10, 16 mil, millimeters. Oh, mil 1060 MB report 2,000 feet field in sight. In conditions of darkness, the flight crews likely spotted the city lights of Fujairah-Gurafa and Kalba during descent, assuming these were the lights of Dubai. Radio contact between the flight and Dubai approach became more difficult during the descent over the mountainous terrain. As a result of flying over mountainous terrain, about 80 kilometers to East Dubai. Flight 296 also had difficulty tuning in DB and VOR frequencies. Descent was continued until the plane struck the mountain ridge at 1,600 feet. Now, the probable cause for this is that the accident was that the aircraft was flown below prescribed minimum altitude, probably because the pilots thought that they were closer to their destination than they actually were. Supposedly due to incorrect information on outdated flight plan used to incorrect 
or misreading of the weather radar or a combination of both. The pilots thought they had their position confirmed when they got a visual contact with the towns of Gujarat, Gujara, and Kalpa, mistaking these for Dubai. And I wonder if you're seeing. So this report would probably be a very good read. If you would like to read it on the channel, maybe it's something we can look at. These are some photos of the aircraft, and this is the map. All right. So, wow. Then it got pretty bad, you know, because just, uh, you know, a few days later, it was March 19th, and Egypt Air Flight 763 of McDonald's DC 9, DC 932, crashes into the highest peak at Aden Crater in an extinct volcano while on approach to land at Aden International Airport, killing. Um, all 30 people on board and remains the deadliest civil aviation accident in the history of human. So let's look at that. Let's, let's just get some more information about it. That was March 19th. So we have our DC 932 NX Adria Ever Permet, Egypt leaves from Egypt Air. Regiment Manufacturer serial number is 47,503, line number 587, first flight 1970, with the total airframe hours of 3,465, with two Pratt and Whitney JTAT 9 engines. All crew and passengers were lost. Aircraft is destroyed, written off, damaged beyond repair. At the location, 7 kilometers. Kilometers 4.4 miles southwest of Aden International Airport, ADE Yemen approach. The phase of the flight was the approach international scheduled passenger flight. Departure Airport, Cairo International Airport, Egypt Destination Airport, Aden International Airport, Yemen flight number MS763. Crash into the Sham Sam Mountains while on visual approach to runway 8. And you'll see this controlled flight into terrain see fit come up a lot and these mountainous crashes in 1972 which is really interesting all right so we go to late march the commander-in-chief of the Soviet Air Force visits North Vietnam and apparently leading to an improved North Vietnamese air defense tactics, which will be observed between April and September. March 31st, in response to North Vietnamese Easter offensive, South Vietnamese against South Vietnam, that began on March 30th, the United States began a series of deployments codenamed Constant Guard, Constant Guard, in which... A large number of U.S. Air Force, U.S. Marine Corps squadrons returned to bases in South Vietnam, Thailand, and the U.S. Navy aircraft carrier presence at Yankee Station in the Gulf of Tonkin increases from 2 on March 30th to 6 by late spring. As you can see, I'm here in the video now, and uh, I didn't know that I had it on a different screen back. But we're going to continue on with 1972. Uh, we're in April. And we're looking at April 1st in 1972. BOAC, which was the uh, British Overseas Airways Corporation. It was a British state-owned airline created in 1939 by the merger of Imperial Airways and British Airways LTD. It continued uh, operating overseas services throughout World War II after passing of the Civil Aviation Act of 1946. Uh, and then you have British European Airways, formerly British European Airways Corporation is a British airline that existed from 1946 until 1974. They merged to create British Airways, the flag carrier that we recognize today. Tunis Air inaugurates service to Tunis London route using a lease 707. For those that don't know, Boeing 707 is an American long range narrow body airliner, the first jetliner developed and produced by Boeing commercial airplanes. Built from the Dash 80 prototype, first flown in 1954. And April 2nd, 
United States Air Force Lieutenant Colonel De Gene Hamilton is the only survivor of a six-man crew of a Z-6B destroyer after a North Vietnamese The North Vietnamese Army S-75 Dendina, NATO reporting a SA-2 guideline surface-to-air missile shoots it down near the demilitarized zone in Vietnam. His survival triggers the largest, longest, most complicated combat search and rescue operation of Vietnam War. General Crinton Abrams calls off air operations on April 8th without either Hamilton or First Lieutenant Clark. A forward air controller shot down during the rescue attempt being rescued. A South Vietnamese commando team led by a United States Navy SEAL officer finally rescues Hamilton and Clark after a few days later in a land water operation. The 11-day operation involved A-1 Sky Raiders, OV-10 Broncos, UH-1H Iron Quos, and AAH-53 Jolly green giant helicopters with the one of the latter shot down killing its entire crew of six and cost 11 men killed and two captured and five aircraft destroyed and numerous others damaged war is not pretty ladies and gentlemen it's not a pretty thing april 5th a hijacker demanding money take control of mer patty nurse Tanner airlines vicar viscount making a domestic flight in Indonesia from Surabaya to Jakarta. The airliner lands in Yogyakarta, Indonesia, where the hijacker is taken down. There is only one fatality during the hijacking. And April 7th, American aircraft resumed regular bombing of North Vietnam in response to the North Vietnamese Easter offensive invasion of South Vietnam. Then, wearing a fake mustache and a black wig, 29-year-old Richard McCoy hijacks United Flight 885, a Boeing 727, flying from Denver, Colorado to Los Angeles, California with 91 people aboard, claiming to be armed with two pistols, a hand grenade, and plastic explosives and demanding a ransom of $500,000 in exchange for the lives of the passengers and crew. The airliner diverts to San Francisco, California, where McCoy receives ransom money he then orders it to take off and fly eastward on a zigzag pattern and parachutes from the plane somewhere near Provo, Utah. The following day, the Utah National Guard unit for which he pilots the Utah for the unit for which he pilots helicopters participates in the search for him, and the police soon identify and apprehend him. Jailed for the crime, McCoy will escape from prison in August of 74 and die in a shootout with U.S. Federal Bureau of Investigation FBI agents in 1974, in November. April 8th, two hijackers commandeer a false at Peru, Boeing 727, making a domestic flight in Peru from Piura to Chile. They are taken down. Now, this is too vague. I don't know. I guess the hijackers are taken down. Why who? I, I don't know. Uh, April 9th, 31-year-old Stanley Harlan hijacks PSA Flight 942, a Boeing 727 flying from Oakland, San Diego, California, with 92 people on board, demanding 500000 cash, two parachutes, and a flight to Miami, Florida. After the airliner lands in San Diego, the captain tricks back into exiting the plane to collect navigation charts necessary for the flight. When Speck does this, U.S. FBI agents disguised as mechanics overpower him. Now, this is a classic. I would have loved to see that play out as a fly on the wall. I mean, they trick the guy into going to get the charts necessary for the flight. Like, they couldn't do it. Like, oh my insane but they they got the plane got control of things and it's all good april 11th wave him a bottle he says contains nitroglycerin and claiming to have a grievance against the united states government 56 year old major burton davenport hijacks continental airlines flight 781 a boeing 707 as it prepares to take off from portland oregon 
for a flight to Seattle, Washington. He orders the cabin temperature to be maintained at 70 degrees, 21.1 degrees Celsius, and he demands a small plastic bucket half full of dry, clean sawdust, a dozen hand grenades, and a ransom of 500000 to be paid by the United States Treasury, not by Continental Airlines. A stewardess talks him into releasing all passengers, and Davenport abruptly surrenders to an FBI negotiator about an hour after that. And, I mean, things definitely did heat up. We're just halfway through April here, and people are hijacking airplanes like it is, like, going out of style. So, on April 13th, using an unloaded 22 caliber pistol, 36-year-old Richard Chavez Ortiz hijacks Frontier Airlines Flight 91, a Boeing 737-200 flying from Albuquerque, New Mexico, to Phoenix, Arizona, with 31 people on board and orders it to fly past Phoenix and land at Los Angeles, California, where he plans to make a statement about the injustices he had experienced in the United States since immigrating from Mexico. At Los Angeles International Airport, he releases the plane's passengers, and after journalists come aboard the airliner, he makes a rambling 34-minute speech while wearing a pilot's hat complaining about police brutality, racism, and education policy. Then he hands the gun to the plane's pilot, apologizes for the day's inconvenience, and surrenders quietly. So he just wanted to have his say. He just wanted to have, he just had something that he had to say, and he wanted to be heard, and he commandeered and, you know, pirated a 737-200. Wow. Bet you a lot of people weren't impressed with that. On April 16th, President Richard Nixon and the administration lift most restrictions on bombing North Vietnam and U.S. Air Force B-52 Stratofortress bomb targets near Haiphong for the first time since 1968. Then, on the same day, a hijacker commandeers Premier Flight 179 to Hovland Heron. For those that don't know what that is, it's a small propeller-driven British airliner first flew on 10th of May 1950 interesting looking piece making a flight to puerto rico from ponce san juan the hijacker is taken down and there are no fatalities or injuries april 17th the soviet union claims that american airstrikes have damaged four of its merchant ships in haiphong harbor also on the same day claiming to have a bomb that is actually a box of cigars a 30 year old marie mario mayo hijacks the swiss air dc 932 <laughs> Flying from Geneva, Switzerland to Rome, Italy, telling the flight crew that he is the reincarnation of Jesus Christ Superstar, demanding to be flown to Argentina. Ultimately, he agrees to go to Rome instead, where he demands to speak to the Pope. And the United States ambassador to Italy holds a brief, brief press conference at which he bets reporters one U.S. dollar that he will not go to jail and then surrenders. Believing that he is personally responsible for expelling Staten from the earth and that he must hijack an airliner and receive ransom as a part of the mission 29 year old Willard Herbert Green gives a note saying that he is a gun and demanding $500,000 in cash to fly and fly to the Bahamas and has it to a flight attendant aboard Delta Airlines flight 952 a Convair 880 22-2 which is an American narrow body jetliner produced by Convair Division of General Dynamics it was designed to compete with the 707 and the Douglas GC-8 by being smaller but faster in an niche that failed to create demand. All right, so they're in the eight. So the flight 952 is a Convair 880 22-2 flying from Chicago, Illinois to Miami, with 92 people aboard, telling her to pass it to the captain. After 40 minutes of negotiations between the captain and Green, Green agrees to allow the plane to return to Chicago, where he releases all the passengers. The captain then tells Green that he can either fly to the Bahamas or be in prison there, where he knows no one or surrender right there in Chicago. Green decides to surrender in Chicago. All right. And then on the same day, a hijacker commandeers Alaska Airlines Flight 1861, a Boeing 727, with 92 people aboard flying from Seattle to Washington to Annette Island, Alaska. The hijacker eventually surrenders. Now, by this time, the industry is getting tired of this, you know? 
Now, on April 18th, two passengers hijack a Slav Airlet 410 Turbolet. The L10 4 Turbolet is a twin engine short range transport aircraft manufactured by the Shack Aircraft Manufacturer Let Conus, often used as an airliner. So, this plane with 16 people on board during a domestic flight in Czechoslovakia from Mariansky Lansky Prague demanding to be taken to West Germany. After they shoot and wound the pilot, the airliner diverts to Nuremberg, West Germany, where the hijackers request political asylum. On the same day, East African Airways Flight 720 aborts takeoff at Bull International Airport. Looking at this report, the date is Tuesday, April 18th, 1972, time 0939. Vickers Super VC-10 1154 East African Airways Corp. EAAC. 5X UVA, zero number 881, first flight 1966, nine, okay, September 3rd, five years and eight months ago, total airframe hours 18,586, has four Rolls Royce Conway 550s, crew fatalities, eight of the 11 occupants that were crew, 35 of the 96 occupants that were passengers for a total of 43 fatalities out of the 107 occupants. The aircraft was damaged beyond repair at Adidas Ababa Bowl Airport, Ethiopia. The phase of flight was take off. The nature of the flight was international scheduled passenger service. Departure airport was Addis Ababa El Silasi International Airport, Ethiopia. Destination was Rome, Italy. Flight number EC 720. Flight 720 to London via Adis at Baba Rome departed Nairobi at 0655 hours. The flight to Addis Ababa was uneventful and the BC 10 landed there at 823. During the transit stop at Addis Ababa, some freight was offloaded together with 40 passengers. 15 passengers joined the flight and the aircraft was refueled. Startup clearance was given at 921 hours and the aircraft taxied out six minutes later via the eastern taxiway for takeoff on runway 7. The tower advised the aircraft that the wind was five knots in the variable direction. At 9.32 hours, the aircraft was backtracking to the point of takeoff. The pilot reported a number of dead birds on the runway. He requested that these birds be removed before the aircraft took off. A fire truck was dispatched to take care of this. The aircraft continued to backtrack down the runway and turned in the pad at the end. It then lined up on the runway and stopped short distance of the threshold at 9.38.40. The tower cleared the aircraft for takeoff. Shortly thereafter, the aircraft passed the midpoint in the runway just below V1 speed. The nose wheel ran over a steel jacking pad. Ooh. This jacking pad belonged to a Cessna 185 that departed 4 hours and 40 minutes earlier. The pad punctured the right hand nose wheel tire. A loud bang was heard, severe vibration was felt on the flight deck almost immediately after the nose wheel tire had burst. The nose of the aircraft rose momentarily, then came down. The crew decided to abort the takeoff. The engines were throttled back and reverse thrust was selected. The aircraft continued down the runway, veering slightly to the right. Then the number one rear mount, the number one rear main tire burst just before the aircraft reached the end of the runway and veered slightly to the left, ran approximately parallel to the center line. After crossing the storm drain located in the runway at right angles to the center line, the aircraft became momentarily airborne as it left the left the embankment on six and the runway as late as it did so. The left outer ring of the aircraft struck the lattice tower, forming part of the approach lighting system of runway 25. This ruptured the number one A fuel tank and released fuel which promptly ignited 60 meters beyond the end of the runway. The aircraft fell heavily onto the lower ground, 10.6 meters below the runway level. It broke up immediately. Impact sliding a short distance came to rest and caught fire. The probable cause was the accident was due to a partial arc. So braking effort arising from incorrect assembly from part of the braking system as a result, which the aircraft could not be stopped within the emergency distance uh, following it properly executed an abandoned takeoff procedure. So if I'm understanding this correctly, uh, they the the braking assembly wasn't assembled correctly in maintenance, perhaps. But there was also some foreign stuff 
foreign object on the front way. What a shame. And that's the map. All right, back to 1972. On April 19th, the North Vietnamese Air Force aircraft bombed U.S. Navy ships at sea. The only such attack during Vietnam War. Two MiG-17s caused minor damage to a guided missile light cruiser, USS Oklahoma City, a, a heavy damage to a destroyer, USS Higby. On April 24th, two UH-1B attack helicopters arrived at Thon Son Air Base in South Vietnam, becoming the first helicopters equipped with TOW anti-tank missile to enter combat. April 25th, Hans Werner Gross sets a new cell paying distance, a record of 1460 kilometers, 910 miles, and a Schleicher ASW 12. For those that don't know what that is, we'll take a quick look. And it's a cell plane, it's known as the AS 12. In April 27th, four U.S. Air Force Phantom 4 Phantom 2s finally destroyed Tan Ho Railroad. Highway Bridge in North Vietnam with laser-guided bombs. The bridge had withstood 873 American sorties against it since April 1965. Huh. On April 29th, Strela 2, NATO reporting names SA-7 Grail, surface-to-air missile shoots down aircraft for the first time in Vietnam War. Moving on to May, President of Cuba, Fidel Castro suspends Freedom Flights program, which in December 1965 has carried Cubans wishing to leave Cuba to the United States using flights by commercial aircraft that depart Cuba twice a day, five days a week. The flights will not resume until December of 1972. Universal Airlines goes bankrupt the same day. Saturn Air Rise receives its assets. The NICA begins a four-engine jet service to Nicaragua, and Miami, Florida, using four Convair A80s. On May 3rd, four hijackers take control of Turkish Airlines Douglas DC-932. With 66 passengers on board, the domestic flight in Turkey from Ankara to Istanbul, demanding the release of prisoners. The airliner diverts to Sofia, Bulgaria, where the hijackers surrender to authorities. You can't win. There's always more authorities, and they got outnumbered in that. May 5th, Alitalia Flight 1112, a Douglas DCA-43, crashes into Mount Longa, about 5 kilometers southwest of Palmero, Sicily, while in approach to Palmero, killing all 115 people on board. It remains the single deadliest aircraft accident in Italia's, Italy's history. So this is May 5th. Let's go to page 2. And let's take a look at this accident report. So it's Friday, May 5th, 1972. We have a Douglas DCA-43 from Alitalia, IDIWB, MSN 45625, line number 144. First flight, 1961, and four Rolls-Royce Conway 508-12 engines. All occupants aboard, no survivors. Aircraft damage destroyed, written off, damage beyond repair at a location 5 kilometers, 2.1 miles southwest of Palmero, Italy. Crash site elevation is 610 meters, 2,001 feet. Phase, uh, the flight was approached, domestic scheduled passenger service, and departure airport was Rome. Coming to Palmero. So it crashed into a mountain long at an altitude of 2,000 feet, 300 feet below the top, while on a nighttime approach to Palmero. Weather at the time of the accident included broken cloud layer of three out of eight cumulus at 1,500 feet and a visibility of three miles. The crew did not adhere to the established procedures. The aircraft was named Antonio Pigfetta. Let's see. Not good. And this is another controlled flight into terrain. And we witnessed, you know, we've read about a couple of these throughout the year. All right, continuing on with 1972. 
recently drafted into the United States Army, desperate to avoid serving in the Vietnam War and claiming to be a member of a paramilitary group fighting against U.S. imperialism, 20-year-old Michael Lynn Hansen pulls out a 38 caliber Smith & Wesson revolver aboard Western Airlines Flight 407, a Boeing 737-200 with 81 people on board, flying from Salt Lake City, Utah to Los Angeles, California, and demands that it fly him to North Vietnam. After the plane lands in Los Angeles, where he releases 11 passengers and changes his mind in order to fly him to Cuba, the plane stops for 50 minutes at Tampa, Florida to refuel, then proceeds to Havana, Cuba, where Hansen asks Cuban soldiers to come aboard the airliner to get his luggage for him. And the funny thing is, they come aboard and they actually arrest him. Like, how? who is he to tell them to get their luggage for him when they're like, no, we're going to arrest you, bud. <laughs> You're in trouble. He will be imprisoned in Cuba until 1975 when he will return to the United States. And on the same day, May 5th, 49-year-old Frederick Hanneman hijacks Eastern Airlines Flight 175, a Boeing 727 with 55 people on board from Allentown, Pennsylvania to Washington Dulles International Airport, Virginia, and demands a ransom of 303,006 parachutes. After the airliner lands in Washington Dulles, he receives the ransom and then orders the plane to take off again. It then stops in New Orleans, Louisiana, then continues to Central America over Honduras Hanneman parachutes from the plane into the jungle below. He will turn himself in at the United States Embassy in Tegucigalpa. Let's see how we pronounce that. Tegucigalpa, municipality of Central District, or Tigas, or Tigas. Okay. Honduras a month later, refusing to divulge what he did with the money. May 8th, United States Navy attack aircraft or the attack aircraft carrier USS Coral Sea began to lay naval mines in major North Vietnamese ports. Same day, covering U.S. Navy A-6 intruder and Corsairs aircraft flying lay mines in Haiphong Harbor. U.S. Navy guided missile cruiser USS Chicago shoots down North Vietnamese MiG-21s, NATO reporting named Fishbed. At a range of 48 nautical miles, 55 statute miles, 89 kilometers with the RAM-8 Talos surface-to-air missile. It's the last of three aircraft destroyed by Talos missiles in the Vietnam War and the first since 1968. On the same day, four members of the Black September hijacked Sabina Flight 571, a Boeing 707, with 86 other people on board flying from Vienna, Austria, to Tel Aviv, Israel. After the plane arrives, scheduled at Lod Airport, Lod, Israel, the hijackers threaten to blow up the plane if Israel does not release 315 Palestinians from prison. The next day, 16 Yerizli Sayerit Mekitel, commandos led by Ithud Barak, and including Benjamin Nahatim, storm the plane in Operation Isotate, killing two hijackers and capturing two other Netanyahu, and three passengers are wounded in the and one of the wounded passengers later dies of her wound. In Operation Pocket Money, U.S. Navy A-6 intruder and A-7 Corsair bombers from three aircraft carriers lay naval mines and harbors in Haiphong and six other North Vietnamese ports. On May 10th, the single biggest day of aerial combat of the Vietnam War takes place. U.S. Air Force aircraft shoot down three North Vietnamese fighters and U.S. Navy F-4 from two fighters shoot down eight more. Flying a U.S. Navy F-4J Phantom two fighter of the fighter squadron 96 VF-96 off the coast off of the USS Constellation, Lieutenants Ray, Randy Duke Cunningham and William Irish Driscoll shoot down Three MiG-17 fighters becoming the first American aces in the U.S. Navy's only aces of the Vietnam War. They received the Navy Cross for heroism during the flight. On May 10th to 11th, Phantom F-42s out of the U.S. Air Force's 8th Tactical Fighter Wing hit Paul Dumer Bridge in Hanoi, North Vietnam, with precision-guided munitions, closing it to traffic. On May 12th, SA-7 Grill surface-to-air missiles shoot down five American AH-1 Cobra attack helicopters in five minutes near South Vietnam. Hmm. Wow. It was serious. War is not pretty. Uh, May 8th, uh, excuse me, May 14th, 
two American UH-1B attack helicopters using tow missiles blunt a major North Vietnamese attack near Kom Tum, South Vietnam. On May 16th, returned into their base from weather research flight of the Baltic Sea. The crew of Soviet Navy Antov and 26 reported named Curl, which that's what the AN-26 is. It's a twin-engine turboprop civilian and military transport aircraft designed and produced by the Soviet Union from 1969 to 1986. It fails to set the planes. Okay, so they fail to set the planes barometric altimeter. For the altitude of the airfield, flying dangerously low in thick fog without realizing they are using the inaccurate altimeter settings, they crash into the kindergarten at Dvetslorsky, a coastal resort, Kalingrad, Oblast, Russia, located in the coastal Baltic Sea. Wow. All eight people on the plane die as do two adults and two children on the ground. Let's see if we can track this down. There we have it. So, all occupants aboard and were killed. There are 25 fatalities on the ground. The An-1224 returned from Kalanad Cabo Airport after a flight over Baltic Sea for weather research. The crew didn't set the barometric altimeter pressure of the airfield, so the altimeter indicated a height higher than the actual altitude. After crossing the shoreline, it entered a patch of thick fog. The crew couldn't see the ground and descended dangerously low altitude at Vetslorsk. They reported an indicated height of 150 meters and a wind collided with a pine tree on the upslope at a height of 42 meters. The aircraft then crashed into kindergarten or kindergarten 10, 200 meters further, killing 25 persons on the ground as well as six crew and both passengers. Wrong altimeter setting, control flight into terrain has come up and struck again. And here's the map. So, it was bad. Then, in May 18th, as Aeroflot Flight 1491 and 1210 A&10A, it's uh, in Ukraine, a four-engine turboprop passenger transport. Interesting. It's from its cruising altitude to 5,000 feet, 1,500 meters prior to landing at Kharkov in the Soviet Union's Ukrainian Soviet socialist republic both of its wings separate due to metal fatigue in the wing center section the airliner crashes in a wooded area 25 kilometers or 15 miles from karkov airport but does not catch fire all 122 people aboard die the accident is the worst ever involved in an an10 and at the time it's the deadliest aviation accident in the history of ukraine and aeroflot withdraws the an10 from service because of it Interesting. Let's take a look at that. So let's go to May 18th. Let's take a look at what the accident report has to say about this. All right. So it was Thursday, 18th of May, 1972. Time was 11.53 and 12 type and 12 AN-10A. Aeroflot, Ukraine. CCP 11. 15 was the registration serial number 0402502 first flight 1961 turtle airframe hours 15,485 total cycles 11,106 four engines get to the uh four i to know go ai 20ks fatalities no survivors aircraft damage destroyed written off damage beyond repair happened 15, 24 kilometers, 15 miles from Kharkov Airport in Ukraine on the phase of a fright and approach domestic scheduled passenger service. So here's the narrative. For, for, for flight 1491, the Antov-10 was operating a flight from Moscow to Kharkov. The airplane had started its descent from cruising altitude and the crew had been cleared from a descent to 5,000 feet. During the descent, a structural affair 
caused both wings to separate from the fuselage, causing the fuselage to crash into a wooded area. Weather was fine with 5,000 to 7,000 feet cloud base and a visibility of 5 miles. Wind was calm. Aircraft had logged about 15,483 flight hours with a total of 11,105 cycles. They, the airline ceased airline, the airline ceased operation of the Antol 10 falling operations for this accident. Probable cause was the center wing section fell due to a fatigue crack in the lower central wing panel. So in these days, they didn't have non-destructive testing and they probably didn't have the rigorous maintenance that we would have today to combat corrosion in flight. Continuing on, May 18th, Eastern Airlines Flight 346, a DC-9 from Douglas, crashes on landing at Fort Lauderdale Holiday International Airport in Broward County, Florida, and catches fire. No one is killed, but all 10 people on board are injured. Let's see if we can take a look at May 18th. Let's get some more details about this. So we have a McDonnell Douglas DC 931 from Eastern Airlines, November 8961 Echo. Manufacturer serial number 45,870. Line number 332. First flight in 1968, powered by two Pratt and Whitney JT 8D 7Bs. Everybody on board survived. We had 10 crew. No, we have four crew and six passengers for a total of 10 occupants of the aircraft. The aircraft was damaged beyond repair at Fort Lauderdale. So what happened was, well, it was damaged beyond repair. Location was Fort Lauderdale International Airport in the phase of flight landing, domestic scheduled passenger service. Um, they were heading from Miami to Fort Lauderdale and the DC-9 touched down heavily on runway nine left the main gear collapsed and the tail section separated and the aircraft caught fire. The decision of the pilot to initiate and continue an instrument approach under weather conditions which precluded adequate visual reference and the faulty techniques used by the pilot during the landing phase of the approach. The safety board also finds that the flight crew's non-adherence to prescribed operational practices and procedures compromise the safe operation of the flight. And they have a report, the final report is available. I would encourage you to go and read it. It would be an interesting read. And the reports that they did back in the day are different than what they used to do today or did today in a way. Continuing on, on May 19th, the U.S. Air Force and U.S. Navy aircraft began Operation Linebacker, a campaign of airstrikes on North Vietnam targeting transportation supplies in support of North Vietnam. Vietnamese Easter Offensive, Invasion of South Vietnam. May 21, a DTA Fulker F-27 Friendship. What is DTA? Okay. On a domestic flight from Angolia to Luanda Libito, crashes in the Atlantic Ocean, three kilometers, 1.9 miles south, northwest, excuse me, northwest of Loboto Airport while on approach in port visibility, killing 22 of the 25 people on board. Let's take a look at the details on that. May 21st. Okay, what we have here is a Fokker F-27 Friendship 200 DTA. Registration CR LLD. Met. Manufacturer serial number 10,439, first flight, 1970, total airframe hours, 3,828, total cycles, 3,224, fairly new aircraft, I guess you could say, at the time. So there was a crew of five fatalities out of the six occupants, 17 passengers were killed out of the 19, for a total of 22 fatalities. Of the 25 occupants, the aircraft was damaged beyond repair. Location was three kilometers, 1.9 miles northwest off Loboto Airport, Angola. The phase of the flight was approached. Domestic scheduled passenger service was the nature of the flight. Departure airport, LAD, Luanda Airport, Angola. Destination airport, Lobito Airport, Angola. 
The narrative is that they crash into the sea while approaching Lobito and conditions below visual minima. The airplane operated on a domestic flight from Rwanda to San Bandera, now Lubanco. And here it comes again. Control flight into terrain. This time it was into water. So, continuing on. Back in 1972. Not to skip a beat. On May 23rd, about 10 minutes after Equatoriana de Aviation, Lockheed Electric takes off from Quinto, Ecuador for a domestic flight to Guayaquil, uh, Guayaquil, Guayaquil. How do you pronounce that? Guayaquil. A passenger identified from the passenger manifest only by a surname, Lomas hijacks the airliner, claiming he has a bomb. The plane lands at Quito, where Lomas demands 40000 and a parachute in exchange for the lives of other passengers and crew. During the six-hour negotiations, a squad of commandos sneaks into the plane through its baggage compartment, ambushes Lomas, kills him with a machine gun fire. Interesting. On May 24th, Two hijackers seized control of South African Airways Boeing 727 with 55 people aboard flying from Salisbury, Rhodesia to Johannesburg, South Africa. The airliner diverts to Blanchard, Manuel, where security forces storm the airliner and arrest the hijackers following day. So, the hijackings are continuing. It ain't getting no better, but it's worldwide, you know. These hijackings were happening worldwide in the previous years. I remember as a kid reading encyclopedias about it too. Um, in May 26, the United States Soviet Union signed the SALT-1 Strategic Arms Limitation Treaty. On the same day, Cessna builds the 100,000th aircraft, the, company, the first company in the world to achieve this figure. Two American UH-1B attack helicopters used TOW tank anti-tank missiles to destroy 12 North Vietnamese tanks outside of Quang Tung, South Vietnam, allowing South Vietnamese forces to counterattack and secure the city. On May 28th, a hijacker commandeers Olympic Airways Boeing 707, 135 people aboard, making a domestic flight in Greece from Heraklion to Athens, demanding medical treatment and an airline ticket to London. After the airliner arrives in Athens, security forces storm it and arrest the hijacker. Boy, these hijackers are out of hand, aren't they? And, and it, it is crazy, you know? On May 30th, acting on behalf of Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine, three members of the Japanese Red Army attacked passengers at Lawd Airport in Tel Aviv, Israel, with assault rifles and hand grenades, killing 26 people, injuring 80. Among the dead is Professor Ekron, Aaron Kazir, an internationally renowned protein biophysicist and the brother of future... President of Israel, Ephraim Kassir. Two of the attackers are killed, and the third, Kozolo Okamoto, is wounded and arrested. Now, on the same day, May 30th, Delta Airlines Flight 9570, a McDonnell Douglas DC 914, on a training flight with no passengers aboard, crashes during landing approach at Greater Southwest International Airport in Fort Southwest, Texas, killing all four people three pilots and an FAA inspector aboard. The crash is blamed on wake turbulence from a DC-10 airline that preceded the DC-10, resulting in increased minimum distances being required for aircraft following heavy aircraft. Let's take a look at this. It was May 30th. May 30th. Let's look at the accident report for this. It was a DC-914, Delta Airlines, November 3305. Lima. So the serial number was 45700, line number 11, first flight 1965, total airframe hours is 18,998, engines 2 Pratt Whitney JT8D-7s, all aboard were just, it was just a crew of four occupants and they were fatally injured. Aircraft damage beyond repair. 
They're in the Fort Worth Greater Southwest Airport, GSW, on an approach, and the nature of the flight was training. They were going to and from GSW on Delta Flight 9570. An American Airlines DC-10 on a training flight had just performed a touch-and-go when Delta DC-9 approached runway 13. The DC-9 suddenly began to roll when passing the runway threshold. The right wing struck the runway and the aircraft crashed in flames. Cause is an encounter with trailing vortex generated by preceding heavy jet, which resulted in an involuntary loss of control of the airplane during the final approach. Although cautioned to expect turbulence, the crew did not have sufficient information to evaluate accurately the hazard or the possible location of the vortex. Existing FAA procedures for controlling VFFR flight did not, preside, did not provide the same protection from vortex encounter as was provided to flights being given radar vectors in either IFR or VFR conditions. In this accident report, I might go back and read it sometime, would be an interesting read. And uh, these are photos. Let's see, a little map. And we'll take it back to 1972. On the same day, a hijacker demanding money seizes control of Varig Lockheed L 180 Electra, registration PPVJL, with 92 people aboard making a domestic flight in Brazil from Sao Paulo to Port Alger. At Sao Paulo, Congo Hanas Airport in Sao Paulo, security forces stormed the airliner and killed the hijacker. All right. And then we made it to June, which is a lot to it, which I'm going to do in this video. And then we're going to have to break it off into another video to do the following part of the year of 1972. So in June of 1972, aircraft carrier trials of the U.S. Navy's Grumman F-14 Tomcat fighter began aboard the attack aircraft carrier USS Forrestal. North Vietnam begins to use balloons with explosive charges. On June 1st, Continental Airlines inaugurates DC-10 service. On June 2nd, quite a bit happened. Um, U.S. Air Force Phantom 4E, Phantom 4E Phantom 2 pilot Phil Hans Hanley scores the first and thus far only supersonic gun kill in history while engaging a pair of MiG 19s. Middle, NATO code reporting name Farmer. Fighters over North Vietnam in support of rescue operation to save F 4 Phantom 2 crewman Roger Lochter. Roger Clinton Lochter is a retired colonel colonel in the U.S. Air Force and a former McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom II Navigator Weapon System Officer. Down Northeast 9, 23 days earlier. And on the same day to protest American involvement in the Vietnam War, hoping to flee, free Angela Davis from prison and transport her to political asylum in North Vietnam, Willie Roger Holder and his girlfriend, Catherine McKee Carroll, hijacked Western Airlines Flight 701, a Boeing 720B, which is American Narrowbiter Airliner produced by Boeing. Uh, it's kind of like a sports car 707 as it approaches Seattle near the end of a flight from Los Angeles, claiming to have a bomb in the suitcase or attached case. They demand a ransom of $500,000 after allowing 97 passengers to get off in San Francisco. They fly to Algiers, Algeria, where they are granted political asylum. Later, 488,000 of the money is returned to American officials. On the same day, June 2nd, armed with a 357 Magnum revolver carrying a parachute, 20 or 22-year-old Rob Hensey barges onto a United Airlines Flight 239, a Boeing 727 with six people aboard at Reno, Nevada, preparing for a flight for San Francisco, and demands 200,000 ransom. United Airlines borrows the money from two casinos, and Hensey takes delivery of it on a tarmac while holding two flight attendants at gunpoint with their heads under a blanket frustrating a U.S. FBI sniper who cannot distinguish her heads from Hetty's. He then orders the plane to take off, but the engine trouble prevents it from doing so. He boards another United 727, which does take off as it flies over Nevada's Washoe Lake and 
Hetty prepare shoots from the rear door, taking 155000 of the ransom money with them. He drops the money during his descent and suffers injuries on landing. FBI agents arrest him early the next morning when he returns to his car parked near the lake, which the FBI had stalked out because, or had staked out because it had United States Parachute Association bumper sticker on it. On June 3, a United States Navy P-3 Orion crashes into the side of a 27 hundred foot 823 meter mountain near just by morocco killing all 14 people on board and let's take a look at that on june 3rd so what happened was we have what we have here is it was saturday june the 3rd 1972 we have a lockheed p3 orion united states navy registration 152 182 serial number 185-5152 First flight, 1965. Fatalities all aboard were fatally injured. The aircraft damaged beyond repair near Just Belmusa, Morocco, en route. Departure airport was Rota Naval Air, Air Base, LERT, Spain. Destination airport, Sada Bay, Nas, Greece. It crashed into the side of a 2,700 foot mountain about an hour after departure. No further real details on that. Maybe. Yeah, they weren't real detailed about the Navy and, you know, the naval crashes. So we'll take it back to 1972 and continue on. On June 5th, on approach to land at Palakut Airport, South Vietnam, Air America C-46 Commando crashes into a mountain 50 feet and below its peak, killing all 32 people on board. So let's take a look at the details. And, and again, the CFIT, this crashing into terrain, Take a look at this. It's coming up a lot. And the, we, we didn't have the technology to avoid the mountains back in the day, such as uh, terrain collusion and avoidance systems and that sort of thing. So it was Monday, June 5th, of 1972. We had a Curtis C-46A45CU Commando, Air America, registration EM-2, serial number 3460. First flight, 1944. We had two Pratt & Whitney R. 2800-51 all aboard were fatally injured aircraft was damaged beyond repair and plea q vietnam on approach the uh, departure airport is who uh, by airport bbbb bbpb hui bbpb vietnam destination airport plea q airport pxu vvpk vietnam so basically, the narrative here is that it crashed on approach, killing three CL crew, 11 U.S. military, 14 South Vietnamese military, one South Vietnamese civilian woman, and three CL deadhead mechanics. The C-46 had been en route to Saigon, Bam Mi Thao, Plikku, Hu Phan Bai, Bam Mi Thao, and was to fly back to Saigon. The crew chief of the Plikku at the time reported he had issued lost comms and heading on the descent to final approach on the downward leg and everything was normal until I issued a turn to crosswind. The aircraft did not take the turn after a few miles began to call the C the GCA. I had made numerous attempts to contact the aircraft on 243.0 and 121.5. I even had airborne aircraft tower C at Camp Holloway attempt to contact the aircraft but no avail. At the assigned pattern altitude, the aircraft was below emergency safe altitude and continued eastbound until it struck the top of a mountain peak. The pilot might have attempted to begin to climb out, but did not execute the lost calm instructions. The flying safety officer, USF, F, USAF Major Mike Perino, was the OIC of search and rescue. He related that the aircraft deviated either right or left a few hundred feet and he would have missed the peak, but instead the aircraft impacted about 50 feet below the top of the peak. Hmm. On June 8th, two passengers armed with a gun entered a compact of Slavic Air Let 410 Turbolet with 16 people on board during a domestic flight to Czechoslovakia from Marianne's Lansky to Prague, demanding to be taken to West Germany. They shoot and kill the pilot and threaten and shoot to kill the co-pilot if he does not change course towards munich and the co-pilot tells them that the airliner lacks the range to reach munich but that he would fly to west germany 
and land at the nearest large city in West Germany the plane can reach. Meanwhile, eight passengers involved in the hijacking attack the four uninvolved passengers with bottles to avoid any resistance from them and in case one of them is a plane coast security officer. After the hijackers see the factory signs in German and Western cars on the roads below and are satisfied the plane has reached West Germany, the co-pilot lands on the 600-meter, 2,000-foot airstrip at Wilding, West Germany. The hijackers, seven men and three women, one of them an infant, escape, but they are later apprehended. On June 11th, a U.S. Air Force B-52 Strata Fortress destroyed a major hydroelectric plant near Hanoi, North Vietnam, using laser-guided bombs. On June 12th, the Windsor incident occurs when American Airlines Flight 96, a Douglas DC-10, suffers an in-flight um, cargo door failure at 11,750 feet, 3,580 3, meters over Windsor, Ontario, Canada, resulting in cabin depressurization and several minor injuries to passengers. Despite corrective messages to improve the door locking mechanism, a similar failure aboard another DC-10 would cause a disastrous crash at Turkish Airlines Flight 981 in 1974. So, let's take a look at this. It was June 12. It was June 12. DC-1010, American Airlines. We have November 103, Alpha Alpha. Manufacturer serial number 46503. Line number five. First flight 1971, total airframe hours 2142. Had three General Electric CF6 6D engines. Everybody survived, but there were some injuries. There was substantial aircraft damage. The aircraft was repaired and returned to service sometime thereafter. It was in a location near Windsor, Ontario, Canada, and route. And it was a domestic scheduled passenger flight from Detroit Metropolitan Wayne County Airport, DTW, to Buffalo Greater International Airport. So it was flight number AA96. AA96 had departed Detroit Metropolitan Airport. It was climbing through 11,750 feet at 260 knots airspeed. When the flight crew felt the thud, Simultaneously, dust and dirt flew up into their faces. The rudder pedals moved to the full rudder left position. Uh, the three thrust levers moved back to the rear flight idle position and the airplane yaw to the right. The crew managed to regain control of the airplane, although an elevator response was sluggish. The rudder control was not available. An emergency was declared and the crew returned to Detroit. A safe landing on runway three Long final approach and landing were carried out. It appeared that the car to the door had separated, causing a rapid decompression, which in turn caused the failure of the cabin floor over the bulk cargo compartment. The separated door caused minor damage to the fuselage above the door and substantial damage to the leading edge and upper surface of the left horizontal stabilizer. Probable cause was the improper engagement of the lacking the latching mechanism for the aft bulk cargo compartment door during the, prep the preparation of the airplane for flight. The design characteristics of the door latching mechanism permitted the door to be apparently closed when in fact the latches were not fully engaged and the latch lock pins were not in place. I've read this report before. It's an interesting read. You should definitely read it. It's a lot of good information. And the, the cool thing about reading these reports is that you learn things about the airplane that you would never would have known otherwise that you would never know in a common conversation. All right, returning to 1972, we have June 14th, the Japan Airlines Flight 471, a Douglas DC-853, crashes on approach to Palaima International Airport in New Delhi, killing 82 of the 87 people on board, including the Brazilian actress Lila Dent. Uh, didn't it? and three people on the ground also die so let's take a look at this this is just a couple of days after the Windsor incident so they were flying the DC-853 from JL Japan Airlines registration J JA8012 manufacturer serial number 45680 line number 213 first flight 1964 Powered by four Pratt Whitney JT3D engines. 
Uh, most of the crew were fatally injured. Most of the occupants on board were fatally injured. Ground casualties, four. Aircraft damage destroyed, written off. Damage beyond repair, location. Well, it was quite a... It was a location 20 kilometers east of Delhi Palam Airport, India, on the approach phase of the flight. International scheduled passenger service was the nature of the flight. The departure airport was Bangkok, Dong Muang International Airport, Thailand. And the departure airport, destination airport, was Delhi Palam Airport, India. Flight number 471, JL 471. The DCA took off from Bangkok at 1121 UTC on a flight to New Delhi, India. Clearance for the straight in ILS approach to Delhi. Runway 28 was given at 1443 UTC shortly after, reporting 23 distance measuring equipment. The aircraft struck the banks of River Yamanda. The first officer was pilot flying during the approach to New Delhi. The probable cause, Japanese investigators claim a false sky pass signal to be responsible for the descent to terrain. Indian investigators say the accident was caused by a total discard of the laid down procedures by the crew and abandoning all instrument indications without properly ensuring sighting of the runway. And here it comes again, controlled flight into terrain, this time the ground. And that's the map of the flight, as you can see. And we'll take it back and we'll continue on. 1972 in aviation. On June 15th, a bomb explodes aboard Cathay Pacific Flight 700Z, a Convair A80 22M 21 flying at 29,000 feet over Puliku, South Vietnam. This is 8.839 meters over Puliku, South Vietnam. The aircraft disintegrates and crashes, killing all 81 people aboard. No one ever is convicted for the bombing. Let's take a look at this. The accident occurred Thursday, June 15th, 1972, at 0559 UTC. We had a Convair 880-22M-21, Cathay Pacific Airways, registration VRHFZ, MSN 22-7-1-53, first flight, 1961. Airframe hours total, 29,434. 29, all occupants aboard the aircraft and crew were fatally injured. Aircraft damaged and destroyed beyond repair. Location 55 kilometers, 34.4 miles southeast of Play Q, Vietnam, en route. And it was, and the nature of the flight was international scheduled passenger service. Departure Air Bangkok to Hong Kong. And the narrative is this the Cathay flight. C's X 700 C took off from Bangkok, Bangkok at 4:55 UTC bound for Hong Kong. The flight proceeded normally along Green Airway 67 at a cruise altitude of flight level 290, maintaining routine radio contact first with Bangkok ACC, and from 5:42 with Saigon ACC. At 5:59, a high explosive device detonated within the passenger cabin center section area. Some of the passenger seats were ejected through a hole in the fuselage, portions of the fuselage, and possibly some seats struck the vertical and horizontal stabilizers, causing severe damage. Simultaneously, the floor of the cabin center fuselage section and starboard wing route disrupted. The CV80, the CVA80 lost control, entered a high-speed descent, and broke up. The aircraft crashed in a jungle area, lightly wooded with small trees. It appeared the explosive device was hidden in the suitcase under a passenger seat on the right side near the wing. A police officer whose fiance and daughter were aboard was charged with the crime. The aircraft broke up in the air. The probable cause is the aircraft broke in the air and caught fire following detonation of a high explosive device within the passenger cap. Sabotage and loss of control were the classification for this accident. So, it was rough. It was rough. So, on June 16th, the International Federation of Airline and Pilots Association begins a 24-hour work stoppage at 2 a.m. EDT to produce the ongoing epidemic of airline hijackings. Aer Lingus, Anchor, 
Air Canada, Air France, Air New Zealand, Alitalia, CP Air, Eastern Airlines, LL, Lufthansa, North East Airlines, Norwegian Airlines, Sabina, Scandinavian Airlines Systems, and Swiss Air shut down while pilots at Southern Airlines return or Southern Airways returns to work at 11 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time after only an eight-hour stoppage. Czechoslovakia halts, halts all commercial air traffic for one hour in support of the protest, and South African Airways cancel all international flights, although it continues domestic service in South Africa. In Vienna, Australia, airport ground crews walk off the job in sympathy with the protests, and Panama City, Panama, cars block entrances to the airport. Lowed International Airport outside Tel Aviv closes, and most flights at airports in Canada are canceled. Other airlines and airports around the world operate normally during the stoppage. On June 18, 1972, in the Staines disaster, British European Airways Flight 548, a Hawker Sidley Trident 1C, crashes at Staines upon Thames, England. In less than three minutes after takeoff from London Heathrow, killing all 118 people on board. It will be the deadliest aviation accident in the United Kingdom until December of 1988. So we'll take a look at June 18th and go through this. Some more details on it. So it was a Hawker Sidley HS-121 Trident 1C, British European Airways, BEA, GARPI. Manufacturer serial number 2109, first flight 1964, crew of nine, fatalities all aboard were fatally injured. Aircraft damage destroyed, written off, damage beyond repair. Location near Staines on initial climb out, the nature was an international scheduled passenger service. The departure airport was London Heathrow, United Kingdom. Destination was Brussels, Belgium, flight 548. And I mean, there's, there is so much on there. I've seen documentaries on this crash back in the day, and there's one on uh, air crash investigation. That's pretty good. I have a couple of them. Um, so what basically happened was that this flight was a scheduled passenger service from London to Brussels. Start clearance was given at 1539 for a scheduled departure time at 1545. Pushback was not requested until 1600 due to a load adjustment. Clearance to taxi was given at 1603. The HS-121 Trident taxi to runway 28R for takeoff. At 1606.53, the crew reported ready for takeoff. Takeoff clearance was given. And at 1608.30, the bricks were released. Now, they had like a procedure for noise abatement that they had to do that was very strict. If they didn't do it correctly, um, they get a black market on the record. The pilots did. So basically what happened in this crash was um, during the climb out phase, after they did the that initial climb out, they, there's leading edge devices on the front of the ring there was a droop, it's called droop, and it's like the slats of your modern day airliner. And the, they were out and they were facilitating the climb. Without the droops, the airliner, the airliner can't climb. So basically those were accidentally, somehow inadvertently um, pushed in and retracted. And it led to the aircraft falling out of the sky. I know this because I watched so many documentaries on it. So I don't want to sit here and read the narrative. But there's a lot of good information in the narrative and in the reports and the AIB investigation reports. But I'm going to go over the, pilot, the, the probable cause here. And it says failure by the pilot in command to achieve and maintain adequate speed after noise abatement procedures. So he was flying slightly under the speed. In aircraft, speed and altitude is your lifeline. Group retraction at 60 knots below the minimum speed. That's that's They didn't have a chance to... They didn't have a chance. Failure to monitor the speed error and observe the droop lever movement. Failure to diagnose the reason for stick pusher operation and warnings. Operation of stall recovery override lever. And factors was aircraft, uh, the, the, the aircraft uh, operating officer abnormal heart condition of the captain, which it's hard to say. But I encourage you all to look at this report Look at this infamous crash. Look at the reports. Read, 
which you can find, look at the documentaries, and come to a conclusion yourself about what the cause of the crash is. Because we didn't have air, um, the, uh, the black boxes at the back of the aircraft at the time, um, there's a lot of mystery in this crash. So I'm going to go back to 1972 and we're going to talk about June 20th. There was an airline pilots, airline pilots on June 20th hold a strike, worldwide strike calling for tighter security. So the industry was tired of it. They were done. They were putting their foot down. They were saying, yes, we are going for tighter security. So on June 21st, the French pilot Jean Boulet pilots Air Special SA-315 Lama, which is a helicopter, to a world record altitude for helicopters of 40,820 feet, 12,440 meters. The record still stands as he begins to descend. His engine flames out. Unable to restart it, he safely auto-rotates all the way to the ground, thus also setting a world record for the longest auto-rotation in history. On June 23rd, traveling under the name Robert Wilson and armed with a submachine, submachine gun, he smuggled aboard a trombone case. 28-year-old Martin J. McNally commanders American Airlines Flight 119, a Boeing 727 with 119 people aboard, flying from St. Louis, Missouri to Tulsa, Oklahoma. As it approaches Tulsa, he orders the airliner to return to St. Louis, demanding 502, 500,000 and five parachutes. When he receives the money after the plane lands at St. Louis, while the plane is on the ground, the 30-year-old David J. Hanley becomes engaged by the hijacking while watching events unfold on television. In his lounge at the Marriott Hotel near the airport, he drives his 1971 Cadillac through the airport's fence and smashes it into the landing gear strut under the airliner's left wing at 80 miles per hour at 2 30, excuse me 12 30 a.m on june 24. mcnally demands another 727 after it arrives he walks to it hiding behind the hostages to avoid being shot by police and snipers he orders the new plane to take off and fly northeast at 2 50 a.m on june 24. he parachutes from the plane at an altitude of 8,000 feet 2,400 meters near peru indiana with ransom money he has left after giving the flight attendants generous tips but loses the money and his gun during the descent. He later was apprehended by police. Now I wonder, did the did the, the flight attendants get to keep the money in that case, uh, the tips from the hijacking, or did they give it back? I don't know. All right, so where we are. All right, on June 24th, Brenner Flight 191, a de Havilland DH 1114 Heron 2B, crashes while attempting to land at Mercadita Airport in Ponce, Puerto Rico, killing five of the 20 people on board, injuring all 15 survivors. So, what was the cause of this one? Let's take a look at June 24th in aviation. All right, so we have a 114, a de Havilland DH-114. Not the prettiest looking plane, but it is what it is. Registration then 554PR, November 554, Papa Romeo. And then manufacturer serial number 14,085. First flight, 1955. Total airframe hours, 11,364 with four Continental IO 520E engines. The crew of two were fatally injured. Three of the passengers of the 18 were fatally injured for a total of five fatalities of the 20 occupants. Aircraft was destroyed, written off damage beyond repair. Location, Ponce Mercadilla Airport, Puerto Rico, nine meters, 30 feet. The crash site elevation was nine meters, 30 feet above sea level. Now, the phase of the flight was approached. Domestic scheduled passenger service, departure airport, San Juan, Alas Verdes, Puerto Rico, Ponce Mercedes, destination, flight 191. The Heron was over rotated, lost control, and crashed. While the crew were executing a go round after trying to land run 20 on 29. 
The probable cause was the National Transportation Safety Board determines that the probable cause of the accident was loss of directional coal control during go around from landing attempt. Control was lost when the aircraft was overrated too low at an airspeed to, at an airspeed that was too low to sustain flight. The crew's reasons for rejecting the landing are never known and can never be known. Interesting. So, on June 29th, actually, before we get there, on June 25th, Trans World Airlines inaugurates L-1011, Lockheed L-1011 service with a flight from St. Louis, Missouri to Los Angeles, California. The entire flight from Los Angeles, and fire flight from takeoff to landing is made on autopilot. L-1011 is that beautiful plane there. Um, on June 29th, after a North Vietnamese surface-to-air missile cripples its OV-10 Bronco and runs its observer parachute unusable, U.S. Air Force Captain Stephen L. Barrett remains aboard the OV-10 and ditches it in the Gulf of Tonkin in order to save his observer. Bennett dies, but the observer survives. Bennett will receive the Medal of Honor posthumously for his actions. On June 29th, also, North Central Airlines Flight 290, a Convair 580 with five people aboard, and an Air Wisconsin Flight 671, a de Havilland DH-6 Quinar carrying eight people collide over Wisconsin's Lake Winnebago. Both aircraft crash into the lake, killing all 13 people aboard. And... In the interest of time, I'm not going to look at the details because it was a mid-air collusion. And mid-air collusions, we didn't have TCAS back in the day, so mid-air collisions were a lot happening back then. On June 30th, the American 1972 bombing campaign against North Vietnam has destroyed 106 bridges, all of the country's oil depots, and the pipeline running south demilitarized zone. So, due to the strange behavior... Also on the same day, due to his strange behavior while checking in for Hughes Air West Flight 775, a Douglas DC-9, Seattle-Tacoma International Airport outside of Washington, 25-year-old Daniel Bernard Carey is flagged as a possible aircraft hijacker and subject to a thorough search, but found to be unarmed. He boards the airplane, which takes off for a flight to Salt Lake City, Utah, with an intermediate stop in Portland, Oregon, with 42 people aboard. About halfway through the flight, he tells the stewardess that he wants $50,000 in a parachute, claiming that he plans to jump out of the plane near Pontello, Idaho. Idaho. He does not mention having a weapon, so he, the captain continues to fly to Portland, where the captain orders the passengers to evacuate the airliner, carry it, and surrenders quietly, and is committed to a mental institution. All right, so we've made it through June of 1972. It looks like it's going to take another video or two to get through the rest of 1972. If you like this content, feel free to like, share, subscribe the video, comment below, tell me what you think. This is a departure from what, a slight departure from what we're about, but I was always interested in aviation technologies. And thank you for watching the video. Take care.